What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Shoot the Shit podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, and with me is today. Actually, this is it's been a while since we did this. The last time we did one together was in studio, and that's my co-host, Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? Gang, gang, baby. Gang, gang. Gang up. And today, our, our guest, uh, the third booze bro to be on the channel this year. Uh, yeah. SoCal Exploring. Scott, how you doing, brother? Yo, what's up? And I'm happy to finally do a podcast with Sammy. Like when <laughs> Tony said, let's do shoot the shit. I was like, yeah, but Sammy's got to be on it. Because we haven't oh, done yeah. it. I mean, it, it's been... See, I, 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 with the legend here, meaning Scott, not me. I'm <laughs> nobody. Nobody? I'm nobody. Sammy, the legendary Tampa Bay Bucks fan. Gang, gang, baby. <laughs> Should I put my hat on? <laughs> uh, Scott, what you been up to, man? Uh, chilling. You know, the last time we talked, I think was what last year at the start of this whole thing, the whole pandemic. We did a booze bros crossover, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it was. I mean, I popped in on a couple of live streams here and there, but as far as like a dedicated podcast, I think it was like when the pandemic started. Um, but yeah, nothing much. Same thing. Working. You know, I. It, it's crazy that what I like doing about these shows with you in specific is. It's it's cool to see how both me and you grow simultaneously, you know. Right. Like, because we started off with like Jed Bryan and everything, and now we're here, and it's just crazy to see how we keep growing. It's sick. I know, man. It's it's interesting to see that the Mindless Horror Podcast is now in like the one thirties. Shoot the shit, or this is the season one of this one, so we're gonna go at least I think twenty something episodes for this season. Um. Got it, hey, bro. You gotta go talk to the mic, bro. I can't hear you. Oh, am I? Yeah, I was there gonna say you're, you're a go. little below. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, yeah, it's 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 just interesting that uh, mindless horror, you know, 130 episodes plus, uh, shoot the shit, season one, going like 20 something episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, it's nuts, man. And then we're at like we just crossed 2100 subscribers. So, yeah, it's sick. It's nuts, man. But you, now, man. it feels like forever once you get to a thousand. Like, man, counting down those hundreds. <laughs> you, man, you've been you've been growing and grinding, man. Talk to us about yeah. how that's been like. Um, I think really with the pandemic, it's kind of helped me, and I hate to say that because I hate that everything's gone down like this. But really, the pandemic has, and quarantine and all that has let me focus on more of the quality of my content and what I want to do with it and just, you know, building stuff. You know, I, I told you last year when we did our last podcast, I want to build a team. And I don't think that H and U was a thing then. So yeah, I built my team, got Michael from Hello Thrills and Adrian from Lost TV. And more than just my team, it's like, they're my friends. They're some of my best friends, even if we're across the country. I, I love those two dudes. Yeah, man. I, I think we had Michael on the channel, uh, Your mic went muted. <laughs> oh shit! What's going on? I heard. Well, I can hear you now. I heard. Um, yeah. I, we heard. We had Michael on. Mm -hmm. and, and you could, uh, yeah. But I will ask a question when we try to figure out his his audio issues. Should be like more is lost or Michael? <laughs> oh my God, Sammy! I like them both evenly, man. I love Michael and, and Adrian so much. Like. They both have their great qualities. I love those two dudes. Oh, okay, which one? So, which one? Like, okay, you, you have one phone call and a gun okay, to your okay. head. Who are you calling? I think that since Adrian is just, Adrian's the person to mm -hmm. always answer the phone, like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd call Adrian because it doesn't come down to favoritism, it just comes down to who would actually pick up the phone <laughs> and that'd be Adrian. <laughs> I, I, Michael I would pick up the phone after like one, one ring. Adrian would definitely, I, I've known Adrian to be the one yeah. to pick up the Adrian. phone. I, could, I think out of all the boo bros, it'd be Adrian. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if I could, I, if I, cause I always accidentally do things on my phone mm -hmm. and I've initiated many video chats on accident and Adrian yeah. has usually <laughs> been the one to answer literally like okay so the thing with sammy guys is sammy was just randomly a video chat the group chat like at six in the morning and i'm like what <laughs> i don't know why like my phone will just like my phone messes up sometimes and 
just decides that I clicked like on the bottom and it decided I clicked the it was time for a video chat. Yeah. I'm like, that's not what I clicked. I was <laughs> clicking to get out of the message. <laughs> that's to start a call. I know. And then I always think I'm like, did I actually miss the video chat? Like they're are they wanting to talk or something? <laughs> <laughs> I totally I totally agree. Um what do you what do you think's been the biggest change um on your your channel um since like you first started to where you are now? The biggest change I think would I mean every day that I I think that the the biggest issue of being a YouTuber is you always want to one up yourself and you don't you don't know when to give yourself a break. So it's like with me, I've never known to give myself a break and stuff like that. But I think that's a good thing in my favor, at least for the time being, because of how much I've grown. Um, since the quality is up to its game, I've learned how to film more vlogs with like in manual mode, because that's a pain, but it, it pays off and how to talk to the camera more and, and stuff like that. So I think that consistency and consistency, consistency mixed with the quality, because I always live by the motto of like quality over quantity. But I've never had that um how do i say that self-appreciation where i can look at my video and be like yeah that has the quality that one has the quality that one has the quality and not be disappointed in some of my videos i've always had for the most part like i like all of them i'm back by the way so that's nice oh welcome back tony <laughs> yeah sammy, welcome back. Over. <laughs> sammy did you, he, he's a good guy man i, I trained him well he's a good host he's plug a good, in plug good in. host right there man good shit yeah. Just ask stupid questions. That's all I do. <laughs> pretend like pretend like I actually care about things. <laughs> do you know? I do. I care about some things. <laughs> I care about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Rock and oh, roll. Oh yeah, that's, that's all there is. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, with Scott, I I know that your your channel heavily revolves around, you know, the theme parks and and whatnot. What's been the most challenging thing this quarantine to keep your content coming out and flowing, man? Um, news, obviously. Like, a lot of theme parks have been releasing news, especially with Super Nintendo World and the construction updates. Um, you said what's the most difficult thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely news. I, I feel like you can only do so much at these different uh, shopping districts, City Walk, Downtown Disney, and stuff like that. So it's been hard to put more value into the content that I want to make because on a typical day, I'm not going to be going to downtown Disney and filming a couple of new pieces of merch that comes out. If the parks were open, that's just like, I would never do that. But in the new era, it's really the only bit of news or new stuff coming out. And at the end of the day, you got to keep growing with YouTube and got to keep it consistent. So it's not, so much so recycling content it's just like if you're not keeping up with it then you're not going to grow you know we all like to do our content of like hhn speculations or like the podcast or you know just fun videos like that um but you also got to uh look at content to help you grow too and i feel like that's been the most challenging thing is there hasn't been a lot of new stuff at all (laughs) so there's nothing to film yeah i feel you brother One, one thing that is new um actually and I'm excited to hear your input on this because we don't really get to talk about these types of things. But what are your thoughts on um, Disneyland converting the Rainforest Cafe to the Star Wars trading post? Oh, yeah. I, I think that they kind of overkilled that too much. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures, but at, at first it was looking cool. And now it just feels like they're just trying to throw a bunch of military mm-hmm. shit all over it. Like, just calm down a little bit. You're overkilling it a little bit. Um but I mean, I think it looks cool. I think I hope that the inside is actually decked out and decorated and like nicely done permanently instead of just small pop ups. I mean, I would believe that they are doing a good job with it since they've taken so long on it. So, you know. All right. I am very sorry for technical difficulties. It's on my end. Uh, I've literally swapped spots now. We should be hopefully fine on the way, the rest of the ride. Uh, we were talking about the galaxy's edge store um i i I was bringing up the fact that i had not been on disney property since last march so Mm -hmm. i went for the first time on monday of last week uh and when we got there because i remember i texted you scott about it you said you were gonna probably go check it out but 
Uh, yeah. You had heard that it was going to be, you know, crowded and stuff. When we got there, we got right in, no problem. Uh, I, because I'm not really a big, like, theme park follower and stuff, you know. I mean, I go to the parks, you know, I go to all that. I know the news and stuff. I listen, I watch you guys and everything, but yeah. I uh, I didn't know it was California Adventure's 20th birthday that day. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I showed up, I saw, like, a bunch of decor everywhere for that and, you know, everyone there with, like, tons of bags buying all the merch yeah. Um, so when we got there, it was good. We did everything. It was good. So I saw the outside of the, of the galaxy's edge, uh, thing and it looked pretty cool. Uh, they added Ray's big bike from force awakens in the front, which is pretty cool. Uh, but when we were leaving, that's when it got packed. Cause we went the same way we came in and they, there's like a little parking lot right there that they have, they have the new entrance right there and it was just crowded. Um, yeah with people that sounded like more like you, what you were hearing compared to when I got there and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I think that in the morning is like right in the morning is when there was a big line and then you got there and I was like slower and, but like from the pictures you're posting and stuff, like it looked cause like you said, you don't typically like um, follow, especially right now, right. like compared to all the other times I've been going to downtown Disney, that is like busy. So that is where, like, and, yeah, obviously later on people were coming in because it was the 20th anniversary and whatnot. Yeah, it was because um, we were going to go into the Disney store. Mm-hmm. And then we were in line, like, right there, like, the main line they have outside. And we got to the front, and the fire alarm went off. Really? Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen that happen hell? ever at Disneyland. Um, It was nuts. But... Yeah, I, I I think I've been to I've been to Downtown Disney once since the pandemic start. I've mm-hmm. been to City Walk once since the pandemic started. Um, it's it's just been mostly for me, just kind of going to work and coming home, kind of a boring life. But I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> all that we can do right now, man. COVID's a scary oh, time, man. Mm-hmm. At least you leave your house. Yeah, Sammy <laughs> doesn't leave his house at all. Right here where I am, I work, I sleep. My bed's right there play xbox sammy looks out the window he looks out the window I, going, I, one day i do look out the window right here right there right window uh-huh, uh-huh. i would take it off but i have like fun on a tripod so <laughs> keep it tore but you know yeah it'll be by the like, way this uh, podcast we'll TV trips. this podcast TV is not sponsored tour. by almond joy but fuck if you want to sponsor me i'd be happy send, send him an invoice <laughs> Hook all the Booze Brothers up with Almond Joys, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not just, about Almond Joys. I am very hungry, so that's like my little snack, but... Man, Almond Joys. Fucking shit, man. I, I hate that candy. You don't like <laughs> Almond Joy, dude? I love nah. Almond Joy. You know, okay, oh, here's here's the thing about Almond Joy, though. I like Almond Joy, but I don't like the al- almonds, and people always tell me, why don't you just eat mounds then? They don't have almonds in it. I'm like, because I don't like dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. I wish they would make mounds with just milk chocolate. No, there's definitely some candy that I I like, but I don't like what's inside them alone and stuff like that. So do you not like coconut? Yeah, I don't like coconut. Ah, uh, makes sense. So yeah, no coconut, no coconuts. Yeah. So there's this beer that I a cider that I drink that I think you'll you'll have to try, Scott. And I want to get your opinion on this because I personally think it would go perfect with a Dole Whip. Mm-hmm. Um, like spiked dough whip because I already know they do the spiked dough whips at, at Disneyland with rum at the mm-hmm. Disneyland Hotel but um, I think this would be a better one with the cider uh, it's like a pineapple cider I forget the name of it um, when I remember the name I'll, I'll tell you though but uh, I think it would be perfect with um, a dough whip man because Lately. Yeah, well, well, Scott's not 21 yet, so... He's almost there, though. Yeah, come on. I've never drank in my life, man. I, I don't know, do that illegal stuff. He's a good boy. Don't, yeah. don't even putting a bad influence on him. He's not but, 21 yet. But what from people, what they say, Spider is very good. Or Spider. <laughs> Spider. <laughs> Spider is very good, you know. And I think that what you're proposing would be a good idea. And I don't know because I haven't tasted it. But I think what you're proposing would be a good idea. Why did you guys just I... assume that I was thinking Scott was of age? And I was like, hey, try this. I was just like, when you turn of age. <laughs> hey, in a week. Odds are the show will be out after my birthday. So technically. Yeah. Well, technically happy, he happy is 21. Yeah, exactly. Now. Let's see you. 
I'm being Vegas. Also, happy and... Valentine's Day, everyone. Oh, yeah, that, happy Valentine's be... Day. Yeah, this podcast yeah. won't be out to the end of the month, so. Yeah, yeah. happy belated yeah. Valentine's yeah. Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah, happy birthday, recording Scott. the day before. Happy late birthday to me. Happy, happy President's Day. Happy President's Day. Hmm. Happy uh, Almond Joy Day. I don't, I don't think there's an Almond Joy Day this month, but, you know, I'm no, happy Almond not. Day, Jay. <laughs> Nonetheless. So, Scott, <laughs> the Big 21, man. What are you doing for your birthday, brother? So, Sven and I are hitting Vegas. Um, obviously, during the pandemic, it's not a lot going to be open, but for the most part, everything's open. Like, the attractions, like, I want to hit up the, you know, everybody goes to Vegas for their 21st birthday for, like, to get plastered and stuff like that. Right. But, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm more, you guys know me, I want to go, like, check out all the attractions and stuff. So, like, I want to hit up the, uh, the Shark Aquarium and the Tiger, like, zoo they got there and just... Um, I know there's a couple other like hole in the wall attractions that are really neat. So I just want to check out that stuff, you know, are you maybe there for like a the, week uh, or so. Do they have the dome theme park? Oh yeah. Adventure dome at I think circus circus. Yeah. Yeah. Circus out, circus. yeah. Uh, I want to hit the, the New York, New York roller coaster. Cause they just like put new ride vehicles on it, but I don't know. It's the, uh, have you guys seen West coast racers? Yeah. I yeah. actually yeah. remember watching your construction footage about it. Yeah, they have those uh, ride vehicles now. So oh, nice. it's supposed to be way smoother, but I don't know. It's like fucking $20, so. Fuck. It's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. $20 May I just them for... up with that media tickets real quick. <laughs> I know, I'll be like, hey, SoCal mm-hmm. Exploring, coming through. Yep, yep, you know. You know how it be. Um, So I want to get your thoughts about this, because I know you, you are the one that covers this theme park more than I think anyone that I really know. Uh, mm-hmm. SeaWorld's doing hollow scream, man. What do you think? What are your thoughts about this? Do you think it's going to be the same thing like Bush Gardens? Do you think it's going to be their own take on it? What do you think, brother? So I think that I think that it's going to be very scare zone heavy the first year. Right. Um, and, you know, a lot of people from what I've been talking about from the SeaWorld people who go a lot are like uh, they're kind of interested on why this is just out of the blue. And I am, too. You know, why is this just so random that they – announced that they're doing hollow scream but obviously if they announce that they're doing it then they sure as hell had a plan before like they're not just going to randomly say we're going to do it and we'll find out how to do it you know they sure as hell had a plan before and let me tell you from zero some from someone who's going to the SeaWorld san diego events uh, a lot and like tries to go to every event they have been killing it in events and there's no doubt that i think that they could kill it with hollow scream i mean uh like an hour and a half away there's not scare from designers and haunt designers and all that and i'm sure they'll pick up somebody um you know to take over this event and really make it good but i think for the first year it's going to be very scare zone heavy probably about three to four mazes maybe even two to three i think it's going to be great though i really do think it will be great and i think that a lot of what will be used will be reused stuff from bush gardens but that's fine because you know us locals haven't seen it so i think it's gonna be good no, I'm, I'm excited for it because, uh, as you guys know, over on the Booze Bros channel, we're going to be doing new episodes pretty soon, too. Don't trip. Um, East versus West. Uh, we I've always compared Bush Gardens with Not Scary Farm. Now I can mm-hmm. compare Hollow Scream to Hollow Scream, but SeaWorld's version. So yeah, Not fun. Scary Farm's kind of hard to compare to Bush Gardens in a sense of, like, storytelling and everything. Not Scary Farm is just its own thing, you know, like, it's its own little category. Right. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm excited to see it. Something new, new haunt. So yeah, it's exciting Same. for someone who's local. You know, like I obviously live closer to the San Diego area, so it's nice I have a haunt within like 30 minutes of me. So you'll be there every weekend, yeah. then, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they boil down to. Uh, he will be there very often. Hollow yeah. scream updater. Uh, you know how we do. <laughs> <laughs> the number one. <laughs> so Cal. Four weeks live. The number Hollow one and only. <laughs> Hollow Scream Explorer. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a you know there's a there's a uh, polar bear maze. That's what I'm there for. That's what. That's, if there's no polar bears, polar bear maze, you're not gonna go. Yeah, no, I, 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 I won't no go. Polar bear maze. Um, I I'm 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 personally excited for this because this just adds like another haunt in SoCal, mm-hmm. which that would put up against the likes of Not Scary Farm, Horror Nights, Queen Mary, and Six Flags. Obviously the, uh, what is that? Oh, and uh, Hayride, which is the, the big five out here, really. Yeah. Um, so that that's another name to add to the 
the list of things so that that, that would make it another a, a sixth major haunt on yeah. top of all the home haunts and everything so i mean we're pretty stacked out here yeah i think that it's exciting because you know you get these new haunts every year like that tunnel of terror or like just home haunts or just random haunts here and there um and you know it's exciting but it doesn't excite you as much as when a new major haunt comes around you know right because the major haunts are the ones that you go to multiple nights and the ones you update a lot you know those are the ones that really draw in the crowd and are exciting so it is exciting that like you said we get another major haunt yeah, man, especially I know the horror community is blowing up about this. I know uh, you made a video about it, uh, mm -hmm. so go check that out if you guys want more information. Scott, Scott, you covered. Um, my, my only question is, I feel like because SeaWorld has been doing so well in these, like, food festivals, are they calling it Hollow Scream just because it's a Bush Gardens name? It'll be a food festival that maybe happens to have scare zones and mazes, or will it be, like, very much like a scares on mazes and has food well the thing is is um and this is something that i didn't know before they announced it was sea world san antonio runs hollow scream too um it's named hollow scream and i was watching a couple youtubers videos from it i can't remember their names but i was watching a couple youtubers and uh when they're like showing the overview and everything it's very much like queen mary where they have lots of pop-up bars everywhere and lots of you can just sit up to a bar and you know the bartenders like has a theme costume and then there's food added on top of it so i think it is a traditional haunt just with a kind of food slash bar festival added to it it's the way that i see it at least for sea world because bush gardens is like a traditional haunt but sea world san antonio the way it looks like they do it is more like a food festival slash haunt hybrid which i think is really neat right no i i agree because um the way i was uh, that was my biggest question was, well, okay, for starters, does SeaWorld own Busch Gardens around the world too? Yeah, so it's they're yeah. all part of the SeaWorld parent Parks company, and right? Entertainment Group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the it's the parent company. So mm -hmm. um, that's what that was my biggest question when I saw this. I was like, Hello Scream. I was like, I know that name. I was like, yeah. Busch Gardens. So it was like, so uh, are we getting our own version of that over here finally? And now I have something to talk to Eddie about finally? And yeah. Um, no, because there's a couple of mazes that I've talked to Eddie about, about Bush Gardens, that I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. I would like to check that out. Yeah. Um, and at first we were thinking that uh, because Bush Gardens Hollow Scream was very similar to Not Scary Farm, as far as how they do their events and how they run their events, um, I was thinking that whatever they got, I thought, I thought they were the same company at first, that Cedar Fair owned maybe Bush Gardens, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. Um so I was like, oh, maybe one day you'll get this, one day you'll get that. But now yeah. it's going to be cool to see, like, what if we come up with some exclusive stuff first and then they get it eventually and then whatever they had, we get. So it could be, like, a little nice trade-off. One thing that Hollow Scream in, well, both San Antonio and the ones on the East Coast, the um, Bush Gardens parks, is they have icons. They have small icons for their events. And I was watching a couple of walkthroughs for the San Antonio event. And these mazes aren't like crappy mazes. Like they're actually really good, right. you know? And I was, I was going into watching these videos. Like it's not going to be that great. It's going to be like Fright Fest. Sorry, Fright Fest. Um, but <laughs> no, they're good mazes. Like they're good quality mazes. Like some can give knots a run for their money. So I, that's what makes me excited because obviously, like I said, if they weren't prepared for this, then why would they do it? Right. You know? No, I 100% I agree because, like I said, I, I'm just super stoked. Like, I remember we, we interviewed someone on East versus West who actually mm -hmm. worked Bush Gardens. And uh, from I feel I feel from there, Eddie became on Bush Gardens' number one list right there, man. And I was <laughs> like, you're welcome, Eddie. Welcome to the interviewing of scare actors. Mm -hmm. um, no, but Eddie, uh, our buddy Eddie, uh, Eddie Tame, go, go check out that channel as well. But uh, he is a big time Bush Gardens Williamsburg uh, person who who covers yeah. all that over there, and uh, I believe Adrian sometimes goes to Bush Gardens Tampa every now and then, right? Yeah, he tries to make it out to Bush Gardens in Tampa. Um, yeah. It's he's he lives he's like me from Bush Gardens Tampa to Universal to right. get the gist of it. You guys know where I'm at, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah. No, so I'm I'm excited to see all this. So moving on from uh, obviously talking more about events, what are your thoughts about um, Disney finally taking the initiative of doing a food tasting event? Obviously with California Adventure, um, this is going to be the, like the first kind of initial 
reopening like how Knott's did with their tasting festivals. How do you think it's going to work? Do you think it will work for them? And what what would you like to see at the event? Well, first of all, I think that it's going to be in super high demand. And it's going to be difficult to get a ticket, you know? Like, I obviously want to go to it because I've, I've tried to get more on the Disney YouTube side of things. I think I've done good at that. But uh, it's going to be expensive. And, you know, I, I think when they announce the prices, everybody's going to flip their shit, which is fine. You know, it's that's how the Disney community is for the most part, whenever they announce something new. But I think it's going to be fun. I think that Disney, and I think you can vouch for this too, Anthony, even though it was a little bit crowded, they do an excellent job at enforcing stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to go on a limb and say I've never seen this entire pandemic. I've never seen a well-organized, socially distant, making sure people enough people are in the stores, in and out of the stores. Like I've never seen them anyone on top of their game than Disney was. They – make you wait outside they're socially dissing you they're constantly enforcing it as well and mm-hmm. they have someone outside that is counting on a little like you know tablet or anything of how many people are in the store and coming out of the store so i i've never seen that this entire pandemic and disney yeah. i feel safe going to disney because of that yeah and like in, in disney yeah. world um we obviously went when it was it was starting to get crowded a little bit more but even on the crowded days it was still like they're doing an excellent job um, but yeah, I think that it they're definitely going to make a lot of money from it. And it's a good thing because I don't know how many cast members. I think they said like a thousand cast members are going to bring back for this. Which is so really that's good. good. Yeah. More jobs. Obviously, that's kind of a crappy thing that all these cast members had to get laid off. Right. So I, I think it's a good thing. I'm excited. Hopefully I get to go. Uh, hopefully I get a, a ticket. But yeah, I know I was already talking to my buddy uh, Gabe from the Theme Park Duo podcast. He's like, I don't know if we're going to go or not because of how it's hard it's going to be. So, you know, it's 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 going to be hard, but I think I have high hopes. <laughs> have, have they announced yeah. uh, tickets on sale yet or no? No. no. I, they haven't even announced to it to the public what the name is. They just – it was they just, just a cast member letter. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they, they announced that on the 20th anniversary for DCA. Mm-hmm. They announced that they were going to be reopening for it. Yeah. Um, but it really doesn't surprise me that you both said that Disney has been really well with their crowd control because they do crowd control every day for mm-hmm. the last 65 years. I mean, it's one of the most in-demand parks in the world. Yeah, right. Disneyland and, in specific. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way that, you know, like you can have a really long security line, but typically it's moving. The tram line could be long, but typically it's moving. Yeah. You know, they have a pretty good understanding of how their operations work and how many the demand is but they're also making you flow yeah you know sometimes when i'm like you know the week of christmas you're gonna have like a two hour wait for a ride but you know they're gonna do their best to push as many people as they possibly can through in a safe thing because you don't ever really hear about accidents at the park right yeah um, you know they do a good job of you know really just running their operations so it you know it doesn't surprise me that they're doing well during this pandemic um and then back to the festival i think you know obviously we're all here like you see pass holders so i think I we may I have am. some <laughs> you're a legacy pass holder i can promise you that i haven't if you had a pa- from, i haven't gotten any email from disney at all well maybe oh, yours well, not then... special and i still haven't even <laughs> yeah. you guys you guys both got refunds and i don't even think i'm gonna get a refund so because i don't think hey, I it's okay a lot of people aren't getting refunds right now so you're not the only well one. okay no yeah. now that's something I, I i specifically say for this podcast that i wanted to ask you scott did you have to pause your pass in order to get the refund though so what I did was when the first quarantine hit and they were like, okay, choose an option. I chose the option and I guess I just got refunded back the month of April because I paid the month of April. Um, yeah, I would just recommend a call because it just seems like that's what everybody needs to do. Uh, no, I was just wondering if, if you were only getting refunded if you paused your pass rather than – because I didn't pause my pass. I just kind of – I just let it go out after. Well, March. see, that's the thing, right? Is, is I I paused mine and I put that uh, it just still expire in October, but then they're like, no, we're still going to extend it, whatever. And then Savannah did option two, which was let it go however many months in advance, and we both got refunds, so it didn't matter which one we picked. So okay, I don't know. I uh, so I'm not a legacy pass holder. 
<laughs> I didn't get an email. Never did. Well, you're Sorry. a legacy Sucks asshole in our hearts. I don't care. In our hearts. I really don't. I, I'm more of a... If I had to choose... I mean, I like... I love Disneyland, but I'm more of a universal guy in the end of the day. And Bro, they don't cater for you, though. It's okay. You just get to go, yeah. go on one thing there. The I don't care. Tour. I'll, I'll hey. go on the studio tour 50 goddamn thousand times, and I love bro, it. Bro, but you don't get the Little Mermaid, bro. The Little Mermaid, the I don't best want the Little ever Mermaid. Made. Little Mer- bro, bro it's a best Disneyland ride. is fat-friendly to everybody. They are, and I will say that. Literally. <laughs> but, but Universal has you something that Disneyland doesn't, and that's probably more nice. So. <laughs> you know? yeah, Wait, well, that's my next goal. I'm going to try the swings next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, you'll, you'll just, me and you together will probably break that ride. They'll be like, they'll be like, we know you can't fit, but we're just gonna run it anyways. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Disney is, man. No, I like, uh, I like, I fit on the Mummy. I fit on Transformers. I fit on Jurassic World. There although, you go. Although, if you're skinny and you're sitting next to me and Sammy during Jurassic World, you're fucked. So Dude, any, you can be like over 130 pounds, and that lap bar still won't go down all the way. Like. If you're like if you're the big if you're considered the biggest like at 130, then the person next to you maybe like 120 pounds, it's still gonna be small. No, enough. no, it, it got to a point one time where me and Sammy were both on Jurassic World, and there was uh-huh. this this couple that sat next to us that were trying to keep pushing down the bar, and they realized <laughs> who they were sitting next to, and they were like scared the entire time. Dude, I, was I hate laughing. when people do that. It's like you're it's essentially a log ride. You don't even really need a lot of bar. Yeah, <laughs> it's more um, there for your cushion at the end. Yeah, it's just really safety for on their part, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, studio tour, the Simpsons ride. You know, I'm down yeah. with all those. No lot bar, really. <laughs> no. We'll see how dis- we'll see how Secret Life of Pets is whenever it opens. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I kind of miss. I've only been to Universal one time outside of Horror Nights, and I, I do miss uh, the studio tour. Oh, yeah, I see Universal rocks. I love the studio tour because I love films and TV. So like, I just find interest in the history of that lot, and then mm-hmm. just just. The, the chances of you actually showing up on a day when they're filming something and you could potentially like I showed up the day they were filming one day when they were filming uh Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I didn't know it was Once That's Upon a Time in Hollywood yet like the, the tram drivers like they're filming this top secret film I can't tell you who it is but there's two giant stars in it and a giant director yeah. and then I I saw the old kind of country road and then I was like huh I wonder who it is and then later on I see the trailer I'm like that's what they were filming holy shit I went on a day yeah. when they were filming I've been there a lot when they're filming the uh, the Good Place and they're filming the uh, Superstore, which are two shows I enjoy. So it's cool to see that. Those two shows actually really have blown up since then. Mm-hmm. Like I think they... Good Place is ending, but Superstore is still going. Yeah, and they just announced that. Uh, I don't know if they filmed this on the lot. I think they used to. Probably not. It's, it's on Fox now. But uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine is ending on its eighth season. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so that's uh, something. What do you yeah. think about, uh, still staying on the topic of theme parks, what do you think about, do you think Universal has something up their sleeve to do an event like this, now that they see Disney probably doing it? I don't know. I, I really don't think that Universal's got, I, I think that they have talks about stuff, but I don't think necessarily that they actually will do something. I think that they're just going to wait until they get it, they can actually open, which is unfortunate, right. but I think they will. I could see them potentially... Uh, if they I think that's to open up the front just not for food but just for like shopping yeah like open up that hole up until like the big plaza mm-hmm. um and you know maybe have some outdoor dining maybe maybe the restaurant in like the front right there or whatever and like the Starbucks and then maybe some of the an extended studio store I know the studio store in the city walk is always packed yeah so maybe open up the extended studio store right there like that'd be something you know that'd be a start yeah so um I'm looking for that what do you think about now here's another one that just got announced wait, wait, I, have, I, have a, I have a comment real quick go ahead you just, can't, just don't be coward bro just open the studio tour already <laughs> hey, they kept it can. it's yeah. outdoors that could that it could be outdoors. that could be a form of transportation that's not a ride that's a form of transportation you know what just you know if if universal really wants to make money and i'm being serious about this they should open up uh certain parts of the lot that they know like on days they won't film for people to actually walk around and check out yeah, that'd be sick. But I think the issue with that is they have so much filming. Even now with the pandemic, they still have so much filming going on. Or like at least okay. like the trail, do the trail how they did with the Terror Tram. I would love to. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. I see what you mean. They never filmed there, so. Yeah, it's rare that they film there. Anything you know, mm-hmm. so um, do that and maybe the Jaws section on that'd some be nights. Sick. Maybe like you know for sure always have the designated Bates Motel 
War of the Worlds crash yet. And then maybe mm-hmm. on some days, oh, this is available today because they're not filming or, you know, this is off limits today. It'd you know, be a so. shit ton of money, though, let me tell you. <laughs> I would pay to do it, though. because Yeah, I would, day. too. That'd be so much fun. What are your thoughts about uh, not announcing returning for the Taste of the Boysenberry Festival? So I feel like that one's a given because um, Knott's have been doing a great job at the festivals, you know. Right. Uh, certain late nights have been kind of harsh here and there with crowds and everything, but it's going to happen. I, I, I'm excited because I love the Boysenberry Festival, like, pre-pandemic. Um, and it's so much fun. And I can't wait. I, I really can't wait for this. It's I have such a soft space for Boysenberry Festival. Um, obviously, SeaWorld's doing their Seven Seas Food Festival around that time, too. So that's exciting. And yeah, I, I think that a lot of the comparison that goes on with all of the parks and everything is like, oh, they're stealing Knott's idea. They're stealing Knott's idea. But I just think that food festivals have been around for the longest time. Nobody's right. stealing any idea. Yeah, they're all I mean, doing a great job. Yeah, prior to the pandemic, obviously, they were doing the Boysenberry Festival. That mm-hmm. was something that was uh, specific. And around the same time, Disney would do, you know, Food and Wine Festival. Which is and their I do. Thing. I want to touch up on that too. Um, I forgot about it. I think the food and wine, you know, the new one that they're gonna do, right, is gonna make, like the price of the ticket will make up for it because, as far as like, it's not not me saying it's my favorite, but as far as the food that they offer and the quality of the food, it's my favorite. Like their food is really good quality and they give you a lot. Sammy, I think you and I did not food and wine, but I think we did a Christmas one with our buddy Michael, right? And he was getting yeah, us test we did a bunch the... of stuff. Yeah, we did the Christmas one, and yeah, and I mean the passes are like, like when they they sold the pass, they were like forty or fifty bucks, but yeah, you got like right. eight items, which is yeah. And the thing is, is, what you don't realize is like, especially with like knots, I always whenever I buy the pass, I'm like, oh, five tastings, that's not gonna be enough. But I'm like, dude, at the oh fifth tasting, I'm like, damn, I have, I'm kind of full. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the same way. It's like I, I think, like for five tastings, you know, you think in your head, oh, it's not gonna be a lot. But by mm-hmm. the time you get to that second or third taste, and you're like, "Fuck, I'm already full." Because like, they fill it up. They give you good quantities. Yeah. No, they, they, I, I think my favorite one they've done so far was uh, Taste of Following, and uh, second would be Taste of Knots. Um, I think my my favorite food item is the uh, pulled pork mac and cheese. That oh, was God. If they could sell that just normal park, oh my God, so good. We uh, did you get a chance to do the Christmas event before they shut it down? Yeah. How was how was first weekend? That was that that had the pulled pork mac and cheese, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was something I really wanted to try. I loved that one because of how they decked out the park really, really good. Like it felt like an actual like Christmas. Like they could just have the park open just for the lights if they wanted to. Right. And I think that's what they ended up doing after they did mm-hmm. shut it down was they invited people in at night to check out the decorations. It was really, yeah. it was really fucking empty, but mm-hmm. they, they still let them come in, which I thought was that was really, really cool. pretty. Yeah. Um. So obviously, you know, all these parks are doing something, you know. We're still undetermined this year as far as, you know, if we're going to have haunts or anything. But I'm glad to see the parks are still coming up with ideas to bring in revenue, keep their employees employed. Yeah. Um, that's always a good sign to see when parks are making the effort to do that. Uh, I feel like Knott's has just been on top of the game since the start of the pandemic. Like, you know, yeah. they took a little break, but then they're like, OK, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, they've been doing really good. Props to Knott's because they have been really keeping on top of it. Yeah, it's 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 definitely something that I look forward to just going into the park. I mean, I'll be honest though. During Taste of Halloween, I did miss when I saw it, when I when I you know when I smelled and saw the fog, it got me a little PTSD. I was like, I miss, <laughs> I miss Scary Farm, but a good PTSD, a good PTSD. Yes, because I wanted to go. No, you know what these. that kills me every time going to those events is seeing um, Berry Tales, the new ride. Yeah, it's just I wanna, there. I want to ride it so much, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just there and the gears are spinning and stuff yeah they tease you with like the sign spinning and just everything's all done and everything you can yep. see the ride vehicles <laughs> yep i feel you brother i have every time i look up at that ride i get a flashback i almost died when it was a dinosaur ride because i was stupid and four and tried to walk in front of it to exit so oh you mean in front of the ride vehicle yeah i was like dumb and four i got that whole ride to be shut down they uh <laughs> Uh, that was like the same thing with Haunted Mansion when your lap bar didn't go down. I know you're terrified on that too. Oh my god! Well, I just don't like that ride. That's like, <laughs> on Haunted Mansion, that's... your lap bar doesn't go down. You're like, oh, shit. the entire time he was like this. I think I still have the video that I filmed from that. Uh, 
And we were hoping we were going to tell Disney, and then they were going to give us something for free. And yeah, that never happened. They didn't. <laughs> now nah, they're like, oh, thank you for letting us know. It's like, dude, he could have died. Like, can we get like some free fast passes or something at the very least? <laughs> you know, maybe a Rise of yeah. Resistance boarding pass. I'm just saying. And we're back. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm to say the least, I missed a lot of things. But you know what, I miss more than anything, even more than theme parks. Oh. But Sammy has the luxury of doing this already because I just don't. I miss the fucking movie theaters. Yeah, man, I that's killing us. I mean, I know I got like in a couple Twitter beefs with people about like, oh, it's it's different from seeing a movie in theaters and seeing it on TV. And I'm kind of in the middle of that, but I will say, as far as like everything goes, like there's no better feeling than you know, watching a movie in the movie theaters compared to yeah. watching it at home. I don't know if that would have changed the way I like uh, saw Wonder Woman. I think I the way I look at it is like there's no distractions, there's no anything, loudspeakers, yeah. big screen. Uh, it probably would have enhanced my experience. Uh, but yeah. I, I don't know if it would have changed the way I felt about the movie. I think that's a good way to describe it because I, I really don't think that you like a movie more for going to movie theaters. Yeah. I think it's it's either a good movie or it's a bad movie, but yeah. it definitely enhances your experience and makes it more memorable. Yeah, I, I really do miss the movie. I think when I went to go when I went to go see Sammy, we we saw. I, I made sure we went to the movies at least. I think we went twice. We saw Tenet and then we saw Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and I freaking loved every minute of it. And I was like, I forgot how this feeling feels. Yeah. Uh, and we went to the Alamo Draft House, um, which I got to see. I guess we have one in Los Angeles that I got to go check out because that fucking movie theater is fan fucking tastic. Alamo, mm-hmm. if you're watching this, you know, hit your boy up with some free tickets. <laughs> or not. It's okay. Um, but no, that fucking movie theater is phenomenal. I don't know if you have you ever been to the Alamo Draft House, Scott? I have not, no. Nah, it's, it's like. It takes dining experience to a whole new level at any movie theater I've ever been to. So, it's pretty. I gotta look into it then. Man. What are the? Yeah, yeah, it is pretty sick because like they give you like free refills on your popcorn and soda, so you don't have to mm-hmm. get up for that. They'll serve you food throughout. Kind of like an actual but, restaurant. Uh, yeah, so they serve you. And, but what's really cool, I think, too, is like, um, like when, during like when things are quote unquote normal. Like, um, they don't allow, like, kids to go on unintended. Um, so, like, you can watch a film and not have to worry about, like, people being on their cell phones or people chit-chatting. Yeah. They have a pretty strict no-talking policy. That's sick, because, you know, a lot of times the kids ruin the movie, so it's like... Yeah, uh, especially, like, no offense. I don't know some people are 13, but, like, and then maybe watching, but, like, 13-year-olds are, like, the absolute worst when it comes to watching a movie with. It was like, I think when we went to go see Tenet, there was like me and Sammy and then another dude. So it was like, oh, beautiful. No, nowadays, it's like freaking 15 year olds and lower. <laughs> like, I'm not going to offend anybody, but <laughs> it's like, um, no, shut I feel up. you, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I do get annoyed sometimes too. Um, what are the plans for the future of SoCal Exploring this year, man? Are you going to go make some more Florida trips this year? Are you going to try to. If they do Horror Nights out in Orlando this year, are you going to head out there this year? What's going on, brother? Yeah, for sure. I think that this year I'm going to do three Florida trips this year. Um, and I'm going to try to hit Dollywood this year as well. Because I was supposed to be on a birthday trip, but things happened. So we're going to push that a little bit later. Um, so we're going to hit Florida in May. And we're going to be there for two weeks. Like Disney World, Universal, uh, Gatorland, all that stuff. That'll be just kind of like a me and Savannah enjoying like our time there. And then um, we're going to go in August for Horror Nights because most likely they'll do it, you know. Um, so we'll be there. We're going to hit up some other haunts, potentially Bush Gardens. It just, I don't know. It depends. And um, then I want to hit it in Christmas time too. So, so yeah. you got three trips planned to freaking good old Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking about. If they do Horror Nights over there and not over here, I might potentially be going, at least for a weekend. I would like to go. Uh, I, I don't think I can miss the 30th, man. I have to see the 30th. Dude, just from the two houses alone over there, sick, man. But, yeah, other than that, I mean, just keep expanding, um, growing. I just need the parks to open, man, because I hate to say it, but I, I feel like if the parks were open, 
my channel will be growing so much faster. Like, <laughs> and I, I can just feel it because I've, I've never felt that self pride and happiness in myself of like, I'm actually doing good. Right. But I have that. I just don't have the resources right now of yeah. the parks being open. <laughs> I know, man. Uh, and Hornets I, uh, and Scripted. Shout out to those boys because we got to blow that up. Yeah, man. I mean, that, I mean, I'm loving that podcast. I liked, especially when you guys built your own event. Uh, that mm -hmm. was a really fun thing to do. Uh, you just gave me an idea for East versus West. Thank you very much. Yeah, that um, took a lot of work. I, that was, oh, man, we put so much effort, all three of us, in that. So the question being now, uh, speaking on the on the topic of that, will will Scott be returning for Maze Treatment season two? I gotta see because they got kind of rigged out of the first one. Not gonna lie, but I don't know. I had to do some debating. When does it start? It starts in July. We're gonna start. Uh, we, me and Sammy had this whole conversation last night. It starts in July. We're gonna start uh, getting everybody, everyone together in March, and then oh. in June we're gonna be making an announcement about who's on the show, and then uh, like April and everything, we're gonna have everybody make their videos. So by the time everything comes out, we can do it. But this time. I'll say it this time, Scott. We're not the ones going to be voting on who wins or who loses. We're going to mm -hmm. let the fans vote. So it's even I think that'll be sick. more fair. We'll give our thoughts yeah. and our opinions and who we think won in our eyes. But ultimately, it's going to come down to the fans of who they think should win. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I'll do it. I mean, I think it'll be fun. I think I need to come back and avenge myself. So, I mean, but Connor... Connor played his cards right in that final. He did. He he knew your dudes would love those Batman maze. <laughs> he blew me away, oh, and man. I can't believe he won against John, who... Bro, that's what I was rooting for the entire time. Yeah, it was... But, like, even Sammy was saying at the end, he goes, there was no way I could not vote for Connor. Like, even though John uh -huh. blew me away, like... I think Connor's storytelling mm -hmm. was just so good that it just Connor, convinced me. Connor's just an all-around chill dude. Like, when you guys hang out with him, Connor is... Connor is so chill. He's the man. That's the one person I want to hang out with so I can talk to someone the same height as me. <laughs> I know. I just relate to Connor since they're too tall, skinny, white. He boys. looks, though. <laughs> I mean, you see him on camera. He doesn't look tall at all, but you see no, him in person, tall. and he's just like, he's holy shit. Trust me. When I first saw him, I was like, damn, you're I tall. I guess that's how <laughs> I am, though. I mean, because I, I did the podcast with the Queen Mary Sliders, and they're like, dude, on mm -hmm. camera, you look small as shit. I'm like, because I'm sitting down in an office. Like, yeah. you can't see my... I'm not going to stand up and just show you how tall I am, but... No, Connor's definitely tall. Yeah. Shout out to Connor, though, because he's a, he's a chill dude. He's a chill, That's genuine cool. dude. So Other who than we shouted out just... of the Booze Bros tonight? We, we've done Losh. We've done Michael. We've done... Eddie. Uh, we haven't shouted out Chris. And shout out Connor. Boy, Chris. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to freaking Rob. Chris is the only one that I haven't hung out with in Orlando. Oh, and Eddie. No. I, I want to hang out with Chris. I feel like he'd be super chill. Chris is chill. All I, those guys are chill. I, I love hanging out with, out with I think Scott and John like one time. And it's funny because in That's Orlando, it. Adrian, Adrian fucking knows everybody. <laughs> so he like runs into people all the time. And he like knows everyone. And, like when we were all hanging out, me and Michael just like kept walking while Adrian like would talk to people. <laughs> it's like now you're in his you're in his territory. It's like him that has like. He knows everybody, but when you come yeah. over here, when he comes over here, it's going to be you that knows everybody. <laughs> yeah, like Luke. Like Luke is so chill from the Rip Tour podcast. Luke is a chill-ass dude, man. I'm glad I met him because he's a chill dude. Right. Man, I, I'm hoping everything works out and the stars align this year. I really want to check out Orlando. I want to I want to be with the Booze Bros. I'm trying to plan. I told Eddie, let me know what weekend he plans to go for Horror Nights, you know, mm -hmm. like, because I want to try to go the weekend he goes, and then maybe you can plan that weekend, too. Yeah. And we could all just meet up that weekend. And I, I, we'd have to talk to John. Uh, we're supposed to be getting, we got enough vaccines supposedly coming in to vaccine everyone. So we can mm -hmm. all get vaccines that's by July, sign. you know. Um, so that's that's a good sign, right, Sammy? That's a good sign, right? It's always a good sign. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's getting people to get vaccined. Yeah. Will be the, will will you, be the Sammy, struggle. Now, here's the question Will you get vaccined? Oh yeah, I mean I don't like shots, but I also like uh, freedom. So you're, you're, you're also, See, you're, I don't like shots, but I also don't like COVID. So. I'm chilling because I've always done good with shots, and so I really have no issue. I just show up and get it done. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, I don't like shots, but like they don't bother me at the same time. It's just like a little pinch mm -hmm. real quick, and then yeah, nobody likes shots, but it's just like one of those. Well, I heard that needle's like, yeah. fucking huge, and I'm just like, Fuck. yeah, it looks huge. <laughs> I don't know, like I have like the worst love too. Like I'll just be chilling there, right? I just like look the other way that way, like I don't like see it coming because I just hate needles. 
But I can like if I let's say like, you like a someone can have an IV in their arm. I won't look at them. Like it'd be on TV or real life. I can't I'm do it. I'm the same way. I get cringy when I see that shit. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. Ooh. And, but like every time, I just have like my arm, like you know, relaxed, whatever. And I'll like be looking the other way, and like my, just I don't know what it is. My arm will flex when they come, and when you flex, when the needle goes in, oh, it hurts. <laughs> Not down. Fuck! Don't even tell me that. I'm just getting cringy thinking about it. I know. Not worrying about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? Every day I'm leaning towards more and more just getting the vaccine because uh, I want to do stuff. And yeah. if it kills me, well, you know what? I lived a good life. Exactly. <laughs> and Sammy, you have my blessing right here on camera. If it kills me, your nice of horror is yours. Uh, okay, cool. I'll just delete the chat on that point. <laughs> no, nice leave it up for a legacy you. memorial. <laughs> legacy memorial. <laughs> memorial to Anthony Zaragoza. You know, it, uh, let's get. I'm going to get a little sad and deep here but i've thought about the day that if i ever died what would this channel would become i was like i wonder what sammy would do if he would carry it on i, I think that we all this. have though like and how many people would actually care about you once you're gone you know i've thought about as that more of it as it sounds like how every day people? like there's like days i just think about like what would happen if i were to be gone what would people's reactions be like mm -hmm. would be like oh shit like did he he's gone i just talked to him last week like yeah I know it's a deep subject, but I thought about it. I think about it a lot. That's not good. I feel you. Yeah, I, I feel. I feel like everyone. Would, at least I would hope that everyone, at least when they first passed away, people would be slightly distraught. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because uh, life is life is short. But uh, I think just seeing, also, at the same time, life. at the same time, like, why not go down as a villain? <laughs> <laughs> Either I die mean, a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. It, I, That's true. I definitely live long enough to see myself as a villain on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. Well, freaking... the, well, what, well, you got to think about it. We're always the protagonist in our own story. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, I mean, you can probably be a villain in someone else's story. Exactly. I, I'm sure I am. No, I, that, that's, that's a, a good villain saying, story. Sammy. That's a good Sammy. That's a, that's a good saying. Sammy's the villain in my story. You guys no. are a protagonist in my story. You know who I'm the villain in. You know the story I'm the villain in. <laughs> do I? Oh, yes. I do. Yes. Todd? Todd. Todd. Um, Scott, you look like you have a lot of things coming your way this season, and you're not letting yep. COVID stop you. Uh, nope. I, I respect the hell out of that. I cannot wait to see it. I am super stoked to see what's happening. Scott, before we log off tonight, any last words you want to give to the fans? No, man. I was just, like, you guys know me. I'll always be back on the show whenever. Um, yeah, look forward to everything because it's going to be a wild ride this year, hopefully, and practice social distancing and wearing a mask and stuff like that because it doesn't matter if you're a big fan of it or not. It helps out and saves lives and opens our theme park. So yep. keep doing you and keep being happy. And if you follow me on Twitter – don't think I'm a bad person because I'm just a dick on Twitter who likes to be super sarcastic. <laughs> By the way, Scott, where can they find you on Twitter and, and Instagram? Twitter, SoCal Exploring, Instagram, SoCal Exploring, YouTube.com slash SoCal Exploring, and Buy all the coffee. podcast links and everything. <laughs> Findmecoffee.com slash SoCal Exploring. SoCal, you just type in SoCal Exploring, it should You'll pop up like, on my socials. Yeah. Now, if they never mind, I'm not gonna say that. I'll say it after the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to look me up on Pornhub, then yeah, you said it. There you go. There, there it is. He's not, his only fan. So only fans, yeah, my only fan. <laughs> SoCal exploring feet pics. No, there. it's just like exploring SoCal's body. Exploring SoCal's <laughs> body. There it is. He, he made a he made a nights of uh, horror nights unscripted only fans. There mm -hmm. you go. It's all there. Um, Scott, it's always a pleasure, brother. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what happens with you in 2021. We're just getting started. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed another episode of the Shoot the Shit podcast. This, I'm your host, Anthony. That's my host, co-host, Samuel Martinez. Sammy, where can, they find it? where can they find us on social media, Sammy? Bro, you make this too easy for me. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, Twitter's got cap limits, so it's Nights of Horror. And on Instagram, we are at the Nights of Horror. So is that how you remember it every time because Twitter has cap limits? Yeah, it's easy, bro. <laughs> uh, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys like this video. Give this video a thumbs up. helps a lot with the channel. 
Uh, share some comments down. So some nice comments at least for Scott, because you know you know he's gonna read them. Subscribe to the channel with the bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. And we will see you guys next time for another episode of Shoot the Shit. Peace out.